Some of you may have taken part in early voting already. This week, we want to bring you an in-depth look into some of the races and issues we're following closely. And right now, a closer look at the race for the 113th uh, New York State Assembly District. Joining us now, incumbent Democrat Kerry Warner, challenger Republican David Katafamo. Thank you very much, both of you, for being here with us. Welcome Thank to you. both of you. Thank the, you. The 113th Assembly District now includes Glens Falls, Saratoga Springs, Mechanicville, Schuylerville, and Hudson Falls. Incumbent Carrie Warner was elected to the Assembly in 2014. She's the chair of the Subcommittee on Agricultural Production and Technology, and she's also uh, a member of the Malta Sunrise Rotary and the Saratoga Arts Board of Directors. Challenger Republican David Catalfamo served as the senior vice president of the Empire State Development Corporation during Governor Pataki's administration. He's also worked in the private sector in government affairs and communications. Right now, he's a member of the Wilton Planning Board. Again, welcome to both of you, and I'd like to phrase the first question to you. Dave, and I challenge both of you to do this. Uh, Dave, I'd like you to tell the voters why you should be the assembly person for the 113th district without mentioning your opponent. Sure. You know, I, I think it's real simple, actually, Mark. You know, I think if you look at what's going on in this state and what's going on in Albany, it's broken. And we simply can't afford not to make a change, whether or not it's inflation and the affordability of, of living and working in New York, whether or not it's our broken criminal justice system. Whether or not it's our education system, which has gone through some really traumatic times with COVID and some of the mandates from that, or whether or not it's simply a broken culture in Albany that is just not getting the right things done for the people, I don't think that we can afford to not make a change in Albany um, because there's so much that can go right and will go right, um, but we need to really make a, a change in the direction. Carrie, why should you be reelected? Well, Mark, over the last years that I've served in office, I think people have come to recognize that uh, I'm a very practical person. I focus on the issues that matter in our communities. I do that work in a very bipartisan way. Uh, I work with groups and people from all walks of life, from all points of view, um, and that I've been very effective at both getting legislation passed that's meaningful in our district, as well as, as bringing resources back. And I think that that's what people have come to recognize with me, um, is that I'm somebody who works hard, rolls up her sleeves, works with everybody, um, and gets things done. There are some issues that you both do see eye to eye on. You both have talked quite a bit about inflation, about crime, and uh, David, you in particular yeah. have mentioned that the only reason you are running again in this is, is because there hasn't been enough done about crime. So what sure. more needed to happen in order for you not to run. Yeah, so I, you're right. I, two years ago I got in because I saw what was going on with the criminal justice reforms, so-called reforms that were going on. Uh, and I could see then that we're headed toward a bad place. But frankly, and, and frankly, if those had been fixed, I wouldn't be running right now. But, but they've actually gone the other way. There's actually been more laws passed that have actually, t in my mind, have switched the focus from essentially putting the rights of criminals ahead of the rights of law-abiding citizens. We see it in our jails with the HALT Act. We obviously, we see it with the bail and discovery laws. We see it with Raise the Age. All of these things have created a culture where essentially, again, the, the rights of law-abiding of law -abiding citizens are second. We see it with the concealed carry law uh, in, in addition. So, you know, those are very important. We live in a very, we're blessed to live in, in a very safe community. Community, but we don't live in a bubble. And we see too much, you know, shooting and violence in communities around the state. We even see David Soares, who I agree with him on very little politically, individual saying that it's time for change. And, and I very much believe it is. Carrie, we're hearing so much about crime, and it's mm -hmm. all anecdotal as far as I know. Are we truly not safer today? You know, I think that there's. Uh, it's it's without question there are there has been a rise in crime um, not all crimes have increased uh, and we are not we don't yet have the data to see um, what ha what the impact of the changes that were made in the April May time frame will yield we'll get that data in the beginning of next year um, but I think that there is you know there certainly are pockets of this state where anecdotally we're seeing the we're seeing crime rising um, is it, is it happening everywhere? No, we live in the 113th Assembly District. When you look at the crime data, the crime data is down, but it is, it is across the state, and it is something that we need to pay attention to. And that's why over the course of the last four years, I have built coalitions to, to push in a legislature that doesn't want to make these changes, push to make, to get the pendulum swing back down to a place where we have a fair and functional criminal justice system and one that keeps our community safe. Carrie, I've heard you refer to yourself uh, that you're practical a few times. Right. Um, so just describe for the voters, what does that really mean for them? What does it mean to be practical? It means not being ideological. 
It means thinking about things in a system and thinking about if we make the change, if we change this lever around, what are the downstream effects? And if we don't like what the downstream effects are going to be, can we change the lever a different way and come up with a different result? And I think that that's, it's that sort of system thinking that is often missing in the way we make policy. That we can't change policy in a vacuum. That if you change something here, it's going to have impacts over here. And you have to understand that, think your way all the way through it, and make sure that the changes that you're making work in all communities and, and solve a problem but don't cause other problems down the line. In the remaining time, I've asked you not to focus on one another. Now I'll ask you a different question. Kerry, what nice thing can you say about your opponent? And Dave, what nice thing can you say about your opponent? I'll begin with you, Kerry. Uh, what nice thing can I say about Dave? He's very articulate. He has a history of being very effective in economic development. Dave? Uh, works hard. Works hard. Two words? Two. Works hard. Works well, very hard. We yes. should let the, the voters know Republicans outnumber Democrats in the district by about 2,000 registered voters. There are a tremendous amount of blanks. Kerry, you won in 2020 with about 55% of the vote when, they were, when there were fewer uh, Democrats in that district. Are yes. you feeling confident? I am. Dave? Uh, look, I'm going to bring the same urgency to this campaign that I, I wish that folks at Albany would bring to criminal justice reform, which means that I'm out there banging on doors. We're going to knock on over 4,000 doors, and we will not rest until 9 o'clock on Tuesday night. And it's up to the voters to decide. David Catalfamo, Kerry Warner, thank you both for being here with us and chatting with us and taking some time a week out. I think we've guys. learned a lesson here uh, that, that a campaign debate or discussion as this was can be civil. Thank Absolutely. you to both. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will be right back.